my book, Ecological Intelligence, actually documents the rise of a new scientific discipline called industrial ecology, which is, which studies the point at which uh, industrial systems impact ecosystems. It's industry into nature. And it was developed uh, in a collaboration by uh, ecologists, um, industrial designers, industrial engineers, chemists, and so on, who look in a very fine-grained way how, for example, this ingredient in this product, when it's uh, boiled uh, at uh, 2,000 degrees for 24 hours, emits these particular pollutants, affects the workers in the vicinity in this way, does so-and-so to global warming. In other words, what they have done is developed a very, very precise metric for how uh, everything that we make and buy and use has a backstory and a, a, a story going forward of huge myriad number of impacts that we have no idea about but which we need to know because in a way that's the most important thing about them. If you look at a glass bottle, it has, from their point of view, 1,959 discrete steps uh, from beginning to end, each one of which can be assessed for environmental, health, and social impacts in multiple dimensions. So if you take one thing from 1,959 and you improve it and you call it green, you still have 1,958 left. So it's from that perspective that green is a mirage. I bought a, a T-shirt um, that's organic cotton. Well, it's great that it's organic cotton. Everything we do in that direction helps. Uh, if, because it's organic, they didn't use chemical fertilizers, which means that they don't have nitrogen running off into rivers and ponds. They don't ha have eutrophication. They're not killing lakes and so on. Uh, they don't uh, use pesticides, so they don't put those poisons into the atmosphere. But on the other hand, it's a blue t-shirt. It's a dyed t-shirt. And almost all textile dyes are carcinogens. It's been long known that workers in uh, uh, dye factories have a higher rate of leukemia. So in one regard, it's great. In another regard, we have a lot more to take care of. In the 80s, I wrote a book called Vital Lies. It's about self-deception and collusion. And in the foreword to that book, I say the biggest collusion is that although we decry, at that time it was uh, not global warming, it was acid rain, it was the uh, inexorable destruction of the Amazon basin and so on, uh, what we don't seem to connect is how the things we buy and use are driving that, those very problems. And I said, you know, if we could know if this hamburger came from beef that was raised on the uh, cleared forest of the Amazon and another set of hamburger was uh, organic and raised in a way that didn't harm nature so much, we could make a wise choice, but we couldn't know then. Then in the last few years, I started to hear about new uh, breakthroughs in information technology that allow us to know as we're about to buy something, that whole complex backstory and have it summarized for us in a neat metric. There's something called Good Guide, uh, guide, not guy, dot com, which assesses uh, the, the multitude of consumer products in terms of life cycle assessment. This sophisticated methodology compares them. You know, you want to buy some shampoo. You want a shampoo that has the least chemicals of concern. You know, it's a kid's shampoo. You, you worry about what you put on your kid's hair. Chemicals get absorbed in the body. They become part of what's called our body burden. They accumulate and they seem to have a role in uh, disease vectors, it turns out. So you want to buy the safest shampoo. There are 50 ingredients in a shampoo, but those ingredients now have all been matched to findings in medical databases to see if, well, does this chemical cause cancer in rats, lab rats? If it does, maybe you don't want to put it on your kid. Maybe you want the shampoo that has the least of these. Good Guide ranks shampoos, also another wonderful website called Skin Deep for personal care products. They rank them in terms of which uh, have the least chemicals of concern, which are the safest. And we can know that now very simply as we're about to buy something, which gives us a whole new kind of freedom.